When hard times come, be a student and not a victim. A victim says, why did this happen to me? A student says, what can I learn from this? A victim believes his hard time has come because God wants to punish him. A student understands God allows hard times in every life in order to get us and help us to grow. We believe so much in the sovereignty of God that when hard times come, we know God is at work for our good and His glory. What if God wants me in the desert? What if I'm supposed to be here? What if this is the only way God can teach me? God knows that the only way we grow is through difficulty and through challenges. Just because I'm in the desert does not mean God has deserted me. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service. If you've worshiped with us before, welcome back. If you're here for the first time, welcome. We're thankful that you've decided to join us today. We do count it all joy, as James did say. We are starting our James sermon series over the next five weeks. We're going to be drawing from the book of James the epistles and letters of James, so it's going to be a wonderful time, and uh, I'm just so thankful that you've decided to join us today. What a joy it is for us. Well, we uh, are having a pretty warm day in Michigan. That summer's holding on, and we are, no matter where we are in the weather, we are thankful, Uh, but um, some people are tired of the heat and are ready for fall. It's one of my favorite times of year. The fall season is when the leaves begin to change. The trees become more beautiful. The um, the wood smoke in the air. For many, it's in their minds the beginning of the holiday season, I guess. Who knows? But whatever that might be, we are thankful for this time, no matter what it is. So, well, welcome again, everybody. Grace and peace be unto you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who we've come to praise, worship, and give thanks today for all that we have, that all that we go through, that we know that we can rely on the Lord to strengthen us and um, Jesus helps us every step of the way. So we are thankful for that. We're talking a little bit bit about that today, going through trials. And uh, James does talk about that, the trials that we go through. And uh, it's going to be a a wonderful service to be able to worship with you today. And um, oh, I did want to show somebody who sent in this picture of the the blessing hands. Very interesting. I don't know where the beard came from, but uh, okay, (laughs) whatever. (laughs) So, well, welcome again, everybody. Let's go to our centering words. In the epistle of James, we learn that when facing trials, we will not always understand the strength and character it produces. Keep the faith. Instead of getting bitter, we can get better. Well, will you join me in our call to worship? Come to the Lord, all you people, asking God to fill your needs. Lord, we know that you are faithful, giving us every good thing. Come to the Lord, all you people, seeking answers for your troubled souls. Lord, we know that you in you are all wisdom and knowledge. Teach us your ways and give rest to our hearts. Come to the Lord, all you people, knocking and waiting. Know that God is ready to meet us all in this place. Here in your presence, we have our needs met. Open our hearts so that we receive what you have for us this day. Amen. Will you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, There are times when we complain about the trials and tests that come into our lives. We pray that we may face our daily trials with wisdom, knowing that the testing of our faith will produce endurance and steadfastness. Please increase our dependence upon you during good times and bad. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, my dear friends, let's go to our opening hymn today and uh, all hail the power of Jesus' name. It's a wonderful way to begin our service, so let's sing it out this morning. Words will be up here on the screen. Let's sing it together.
Yeah, sometimes I kind of forget. I'm waiting for the person to advance the slide, and oh yeah, that's me. I'm the one advancing the slide. Anyway, <laughs> here we go on our uh, first scripture reading, which is James 1, verses 1 through 16. Testing of your faith. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation, and the rich in his humiliation. Because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trials. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Here ends our first scripture reading. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his word this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, that's an interesting thing about this. Um, I want to share this really quick uh, scenario, I guess. And it's a preacher speaking to his congregation. And he says, I want everybody who wants to go to heaven, stand up. So everybody stood up, except for one older man in the front. So he said, I said, I want everyone who wants to go to heaven to stand up. The older man in the front row remained seated. Well, finally, the preacher said, Brother William, I said, everyone who wants to go to heaven, stand up. And the man was like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were getting a group together to go now. Well, it makes me think of the, that old country song that is, um, Lord, I want to go to heaven, but I don't want to go tonight. Well, I was reading actually an article that brought that, that uh, song up, and they were saying something like, um, this is the mindset of many Christians. And they're talked about how this is the wrong way to think. We're too tied to earthly things. So... Yeah, we want to go to heaven, but we don't want to go tonight. But that's not the right mindset. But you know what? I don't know if I fully agree with that because we naturally resist dying in this world. Yes, we want to go to heaven. And if we're called there, great. But we still have a purpose to fulfill here in this world. And of course, there are many people who fear the unknown, and that's part of that. I get that. But anyway, it reminds me of a church sign I saw some time ago, and it said, want to know what happens when you die? Come to our church this Sunday. Like, uh, no thanks, I'm good. <laughs> and there's another church sign um, said, do you want to know what hell is? Come hear our preacher. <laughs> Hopefully it's not that bad, but why are we in this world? It's Many people call it, or it's been called, this veil of tears, this world um, where pain and disease and suffering seem to run rampant. And it reminds me of one more church sign I just want to mention. And it said, this too shall pass. It may pass like a kidney stone, but it will pass. But we all have purpose in this world. And what that purpose is, you know, 
will always have something to do with helping others. Sometimes that help is obvious, like maybe a firefighter who brings a, a burning baby, saves a child from a, a burning building, I should say. Maybe it's something more subtle, like somebody who plays or creates music and brings joy and solace to others through their music. Some people have a gift of listening, being there for somebody else um, during their hard times to lend a, um, a listening ear. But why, people want to know, why are there so many hard times in our lives? And the short answer is, it's a fallen world. And we're not here to talk today so much about why this happens, but that's the, the, the short answer. The long, or a friend of mine would say, the short of the long is, <laughs> it's a fallen world. And we're born into the, this world and it can be unfair. And it's also not our fault that we were born into this world. But you know what? It is our responsibility to do something about it. It's the idea of walking through um, preserves. I mean, not jam, you know, not that kind of preserves. That'd be sticky. But but no, seriously, we were at um, Tequamanon Falls, I think it's called, the park that's up in the Upper Peninsula where all these beautiful falls are. Well, there are signs here and there that say, leave the park cleaner than you found it. And that's exactly what we're called to do. We're called to leave this world a little better than it was when we were born into it. And sometimes the way we do that is when things get bad in our lives, when everything is falling apart around us, or when maybe sin seems like it's having a terrible hold on us and it feels like it's going to consume us. We do what James said. We remain steadfast in our faith. Or maybe as Jesus said in Matthew 16, said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. And one of the ways we deny ourselves is we deny ourselves this opportunity to give up our faith. The truth is, in our darkest hour, when we're able to say, praise the Lord, I don't know why this is happening, but I know that this is of the world. This is not of God. Or maybe we're tempted to abandon God and give up our faith, but we hold on. Even when it doesn't make a lick of sense, we remain steadfast. It is in that moment that we are helping somebody else who might be going through the same difficulty someday. Through our trials, we might be the one thing that somebody else needs as they go through the same trials. They can see that they're not the only one. They're not alone. And someday it will get better. And maybe I'll be a better person for it. Our story might be the one thing that helps them. You know, there's a man who was devoted to God. He devoted his life to God. He had a very hard childhood, grew up in extreme poverty, lost his father at a very young age. And when he got older, he became a monastic. He lived in a monastery where he denied himself many of the pleasures of life, of course. Now, this is going back quite a ways. This is back in the 1500s. And um, he officially became a priest and joined the Carmelite order. Now, this Carmelite order is still in existence today, and it's very interesting to, to check him out, so I, I encourage you to. But this man's name was St. John of the Cross. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. But St. John was asked by St. Teresa of Avila to help in the effort to restore the Carmelite order back to its original level of I guess you might say strictness and devotion. The order started very strict, very devoted to this life of uh, this monastic life. And as time went on, things began to slip. The rules began to slide and people started living a, a life a little less devoted and their rules became slack. Well, St. John agreed to help in this manner. And so they formed what's called the Discalced Carmelite Order. 
and descalced means barefoot. So that gives you kind of a picture of what kind of uh, people they or how they lived. Uh, they often went barefoot or only in sandals, very humbly. Well, anyway, this movement began to grow and it began to grow and the crowds of people began to turn out to hear John preach. And it was much more than the regular Carmelite priests. People were coming out in droves to listen to John preach. And so his Carmelite brothers didn't like that. And so to take care of this growing threat to the regular order, the Carmelite priest actually kidnapped John. And they put him in a closet that they had turned into a prison cell, which actually wasn't even long enough for him to stretch out all the way. And he was stuck in there for almost a year. They treated him horribly. They starved him. They physically beat him. They psychologically abused him. And in this solitary confinement, betrayed by his own Carmelite brothers, he felt very distant from God, even abandoned by him. Yet St. John continued to strive to hold on to his faith. In the darkness of the cell, he began to imagine poetry devotions. And St. John, even in this terrible state, was able to finally lift the prison door off its hinges and he escaped one night. But with his tired but sharp mind, he was able to remember and recall these poems that he had written in his mind. And so later when he was free, he wrote them down. And now his poetry is still popular today, especially there's one you might have heard of it. It's called Dark Night of the Soul. And I'm not going to read it right now. I think that uh, might not be the time to read it. But I invite you to go and read it at some point, knowing what he went through, where he was when he wrote it. It's very interesting, but it's not very long at all. So that's my kind of poem, not too long. <laughs> anyway, that poem that he wrote is how we deepen our relationship with God through our dark night experiences. The hardest moments in our lives and how that relationship will be unique to all individuals. But the common thread through these experiences is God bringing us purification and sanctification. As we experience suffering in our lives, we're called to keep a spiritual perspective of the suffering, just as Christ stayed centered in God during the crucifixion. So we can remain centered during these dark night moments. We hold tight to the faith that this suffering is not without an end. And what is the end? The end is union with God. Through it, we cast off our attachments to this world from our delights of the senses and we move more inward. Our thoughts begin to align with God and our will aligns with God's will. God wants to purify all of us in every part of us, from the innermost of our being to the outmost. God wants us to be completely free. One of the quotes that St. John is well known for was, a bird held by a single thread can't fly away. I think that's a great visual. And incidentally, John would one day be recognized as a saint and doctor of the church in recognition of his profound theological and spiritual contributions. Not that he probably would need that himself, but that's what happened. Anyway, the, you know, the prophet Malachi in chapter 3, he writes about how the Lord will be like a refiner's fire. In other words, through the burning away of the parts of us that are not of God, we experience transformation. A wonderful illusion illusion, illustration, I should say, uh, it was from a podcast I listened to once. And they talked about, imagine a wet and soggy log. Okay. And if you throw it on a hot raging fire at first, it's just going to smoke for a while. It's going to seem useless to the fire, but as the log starts to dry and the fire evaporates the unnecessary parts of the log, it aligns with the fire and soon the wood becomes part of the fire emitting heat and illumination. But of course, we all know that fires burn us, right? And that's painful. 
and James says, count it all joy. But these dark night experiences are not going to feel good. It's not sunshine and roses. It's a trial. And the reality can be extreme hardship. But in the feeling of abandonment by God, we still pray and we still seek God. We hold on. Through it all, there's a deep, ongoing desire that never goes away. It's a burning desire for God. It's an undercurrent of faith that God has a plan. In terms of the gospel, we can look at it as the time between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. But when we come out on the other side, whether it's still in this world or literally on the other side of earthly death, we will experience a victory in this world. It's a victory that James says brings character. And our faith through trials raises Christ up for all to see. And in the world to come, it's a victory as one more child returns to the Father in heaven. Amen. Well, let's take a moment to pray. Loving God, we thank you for being with us here in our service. We thank you for helping us to get through the trials that come upon us in this world. We don't blame you for them, Lord, but we do ask for your help and your strength. Help us to rely on you. Help us to know that you are with us, even when it seems like you are not. Lord, help us to hold on to our faith as we continue to struggle through some of the hardest times in our lives, Lord. But as we come out the other side, Lord, help us to that experience to touch others' lives. Help it to be something that is a beacon for of hope for others. And help us to look to you, Lord, as our beacon and our salvation. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, dear friends, uh, let's go to our second hymn. Uh, we're going to sing it out this morning. It's Gather Us In. And, um, whoops, there's the message title. I always forget that. But Gather Us In, if you're looking at your book, it's number 2236. But let's sing it out this morning.
Our second reading is of Psalm 16, uh, verses 1 through 11. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another god shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out, or take the names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we go to our, um, our Gloria Patri. Let's sing it out together. Uh, we're going to put up here on the screen this uh, this screen that shows who can pray for uh, situations that we usually put up. But um, let's take a moment of silence as we um, think over those who need prayer. Uh, if you want to pause this and have a uh, talk about who we can pray for, you're welcome to do so. But in the meantime, we'll have a moment of silence and reflect on these items. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for being with us in our service today. We thank you for the chance to praise your name and worship you, Lord, to recognize that you are always with us, that you are always with us every step of the way, even when things seem so hard. We thank you for your patience with us and thank you for your steadfast love that never ceases and that your mercies never come to an end. Lord, we grow weary so quickly sometimes. Our hearts are they tend to wander, and our minds tend to forget your promises. We ask your forgiveness, Lord, and we ask that you would create in us a clean heart and that you would also renew a steadfast spirit within us. We ask that you may help us to be faithful, diligent, and steadfast, even when things get hard in all of our trials that we endure, Lord. We know that you would not have us go through these times, but we also know that we can rely on you during these times. Help us to keep a heart of gratitude and to remain steady that we are truly blessed in so many ways despite the hard times. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you and less on the circumstance that we might be going through. Help strengthen our knees, Lord, and our hands and help us to be use useful vessels for your honor and for your use. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for helping us to love others, to reach out to our neighbors and serve them by your love and in your love, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And it is by the name of Jesus we do pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for praying together today, and it's a joy to do so. That's one of the favorite things I love about being able to come together in this way. But let's sing out our prayer hymn response. Lord. Well, this time we'll uh, say together the Apostles' Creed. The words, as you see, will be up on the screen. Let's say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And thank you for saying that with me. We also have, as you saw there, a um, an offering. So you're welcome to put an offering in the plate. And we don't pass the plate if you're in the church service right now, but you're welcome to put it in the back. However, um, let's. Um, I just want to say thank you for all those who support our ministries, who uh, give your time and effort, not just the money, but also your time and your resources and your efforts. We appreciate it so much. So let's sing out over the offering this morning. Well, since you're in the mood for singing, uh, let's sing out our final hymn. Our closing hymn today is Amazing Grace. And uh, if you don't know the words, I'll be up on the screen. Let's sing it out this morning. Please join us in singing hymn number 378, Amazing Grace. We will sing verses 1 through 4 and then verse 6. Mm -hmm.
Well, my dear friends, it's been a joy to worship with you today. And so I'm uh, looking forward to seeing you very soon. I miss you all. But in the meantime, we have come from darkness and despair to hope and joy. We have been refined by the love of Christ and redefined by our faith in God. So go forth to witness and to testify to this message of hope. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today. Have a great week. I'm looking forward to seeing you very soon. Uh, take care. Have a most blessed day. Love you all. See you soon. Take care now. Bye-bye. Oh,